Hi, everyone. Welcome back for another elementary lesson. This is our last week in Challenge Accepted, where we have been learning all about challenges Jesus faced and what we can do when we face a challenge. So far, we've learned that Jesus takes care of us and shows us the truth and helps us in temptation. So today we are talking about a prediction that Jesus made. Do you know what a prediction is? It's like a big word for when you try and make a guess about something. And so have you ever tried to guess maybe who would win a game or how many jelly beans are in a jar? I am never good at guessing anything like that. So I thought I could see how good you guys are at, at predicting or guessing. And I have a fun prediction game to start off this week. And it is how many Legos are in each Lego build. It takes a lot of Legos to make up those crazy builds. And you will never believe how big some of these are. So just think about what is the biggest Lego build you have made. And maybe that will help you as you make guesses. But let's see if you can make a right prediction. I hope you guys had fun with that game and were maybe able to predict some right answers of how many Legos were in those builds. Some of those had a crazy amount of Legos. And so that takes us right into our Bible story for today. We are going to learn about when Jesus faced a very serious challenge and it involved making a prediction. So let's check it out. Oh, hey there, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, 
talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to TV. Hey! Today's a very stressful but exciting day. Now I'm trying out for a basketball team and there's two tests that I have to pass. A physical test and then a sports history test. Now as you can imagine, I obviously passed the physical test. <laughs> but I need to pass the sports history next. The test is tomorrow, so I was hoping I could practice for it now, if that's okay. Okay, perfect. Let's get started. Question number one. What does the NBA stand for? A, a National Basketball Association, or B, Never Bounce Apples? Hmm, I didn't think this first question was gonna be so tough. Hmm, all right. We'll use basketball, not apples. Duh. I'm gonna go with B. Ah! Got it wrong. All right, next one. How many bases are in a baseball field? Let me think. If there's nine players on each team, that means there's 18 baseball cleats that all get packed into one bag. And if there are eight planets, and we're the third closest to the sun, and the sun is the brightest star in our galaxy, then that means there has to be 34 bases. 34! Final answer! No! I meant 34 minus 30! All right, one more. I gotta get this one. Being on the basketball team is my dream. Here we go. What thing do teams pull on on tug of war? Breathe, Carl. You know this. Just go with your gut. Don't think, just say it. Don't think, just say it. They pull, but not squash. Oh, wrong. A rope? Are you kidding me? Uh. Whoa, Carl, what's going on? It's the end of the world, Cassie. It's the end of the world, and it's my fault. Well, I'm glad you're being so calm and not freaking out. Well, Cassie, I have to pass my sports history test tomorrow. And well, I was practicing and I was failing more than practicing. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. I bet the questions are tough. Really? All right, let's see if you can guess them. Give it a shot. All right. Number one, NBA stands for National Basketball Association. Number two, there are four bases in baseball. And number three, you use a rope in tug of war. Wow, these are really easy. I kinda like this. Listen, if you keep practicing, it'll get easier. This is just a challenge you have to overcome. What do you mean, a challenge? You know, a challenge. Something that may be a little difficult, but you have to work on it to overcome it. Oh, I got it. I don't know. It just seems like a super tough situation that I might not be able to overcome. Well, you gotta try, right? Jesus went through a lot of struggles himself. You know that, didn't you? Of course. More than I can count. And you know how you were guessing those answers and trying to predict which ones were right? Yeah. I wasn't really good at predicting. Sure, but Jesus was. Jesus made predictions? All the time. But there's one specific time that Jesus made a prediction that made someone pretty angry. Ooh, drama. I'm all about the drama. Well, Jesus was teaching the disciples, and what he told them is that he was going to die and be raised from the dead three days later. Predicting your own death? I'd say that's a little more impressive than predicting a sports question. So you can imagine that was pretty big news to everyone there, because they didn't want Jesus to die. Of course not. They had just met him, and they all loved him. Yeah, and so out of everyone, Peter was the most upset. Classic Peter. Peter pulled Jesus to the side and let him know how much he disapproved of what Jesus said. Whoa, whoa! Peter disapproved? Didn't he know who he was talking to? He did, of course. Peter just didn't understand why Jesus felt like he had to die. Jesus shut him down and began to tell them more of some really important stuff. I think I remember what that was. Oh. <laughs> Right, Jesus told them that if they wanted to follow him, they would have to deny themselves and pick up their cross? What does that mean? It means to choose what God wants over what we want. Well, that doesn't sound easy. It definitely isn't, but it's what it takes. And as you know, it's worth it. I sure do, but... What? Well, this whole sports history challenge is just one challenge that I have and will face. But Jesus never had to try for a basketball team. We're studying for a test. Yeah, so? So, maybe Jesus did have challenges, but ours might be a little different. I guess it would be nice for someone to know exactly what my challenges are. Well, Carl, I can tell you that just because Jesus hasn't faced the challenges you face, it doesn't mean he can't help or doesn't understand. I don't know, Cassie. What would the Son of God know about having to study for a test? He's Jesus. <laughs> he knows everything. Think about it, Carl. The only reason Jesus was on the earth was to show us how much he loves us. He was tempted more than anyone else and experienced everything that humans go through. Loneliness, rejection, disappointment, sadness, you name it. There's no challenge that he doesn't understand. You really believe Jesus understands my challenges? 100%, and I also believe you just said our big idea. <laughs> oh.
Oh my goodness. Today's big idea is Jesus understands my challenges. So let's say super loud on the count of three. Ready? Ready. One, two, three. Jesus understands my challenges. Yes. Yes, he does. Jesus understands my challenges. Well, now I feel a lot more ready for any kind of challenge. You think? Of course. Bring it on, world. You can't stop me. All right. What's this? That is a baseball bat. Yep. You nailed it. See you next week, kiddos. Hit one out of the park. Yeah! Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. So you see, in our story today, Jesus made a prediction, but he wasn't guessing like we were guessing with the Legos. He knew what was going to happen, and he was telling his closest friends that he was going to die soon. And Jesus knew it needed to happen to save the world from sin, but his friends didn't know this and they didn't understand why Jesus would choose to leave them. And so Jesus reminds his friends that anyone who loves God has to do what Jesus was doing, which is let go of your own way and follow God's way. And that was so confusing and hard for his disciples to understand. And, you know, it's something that sometimes is confusing and hard for us to follow through. And so that's a challenge we get to accept every day. It's not always easy to choose to do the things God wants us to do. But we know, just like Jesus did, that God's way is always better. And Jesus understands your challenges and is there as your friend to help you through them. Okay, so I have an activity for you guys to do that will get you thinking a little bit about what to do in, with the challenges that you are facing this week. So you can print it off from the newsletter or off the website, and it's a picture of a cross with a bunch of different squares around it, and I want you to color all the different squares around the cross a lot of different colors. It's meant to look like stained glass, so if you, the more colors you use, the cooler it's going to look. And as you're coloring, think about the challenges you are facing right now. You might have a challenge at school or a challenge at home or a challenge with a friend. And so after you are done coloring, fill in some of those squares with the challenges you are facing. And we can all remember when we're facing challenges so that no matter what we're dealing with, Jesus understands and Jesus will help us with any challenge that comes our way. So to remind us of that, Important fact, I want you to write that Jesus understands and helps me right in the middle of the cross. And that is the middle and the most important part of all of those challenges you're facing, that Jesus is there. And we can remember to go and choose God's way instead of our own way as we come up with challenges throughout the week. So put this paper up in your room to remind yourself that no matter what you face, you have Jesus there to help you. I hope you guys have fun doing that activity and I would love to see pictures of it if you wanna send me an email or a text with your finished picture. So that takes us to the end of our lesson. Thanks so much for spending time with me and going through our lesson. Have a great week and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye.